very quickly. Lane, your opponent this morning was up at a manufacturing plant in Centralia and unveiled a um, uh, $1,500 manufacturing tax credit. I don't know if you heard the particulars, but, but any thoughts on that? Any response? Well, I haven't seen the, the, the program, so it's a little difficult for me to respond to that particular program, but I have seen her previous um, initiatives, and they were all tax increases, so I'm not sure that the people of this district are ready for a $1,700 per taxpayer tax increase, costing 20,000 jobs in this district. I think that uh, that sort of uh, proposal is, is irresponsible when you look at the, the economy and the prices we're in today. As a result, I, I haven't seen her exact proposal right now, so I'm not uh, ready to uh, discuss it, but if it's anything like her past proposals, I, I don't think that it's something that the people of this district are, 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 are or something that they would want. Blaine, on the uh, DCCC mailer that humorously said that you were Kenny Holsoff as opposed to Blaine Luke DeMeyer, the substance of it repeated a charge that was in the primary that I think your opponent has said before about a bill that you sponsored dealing with insurance coverage, mammograms, and immunizations. Do you have any response to this sort of line of attack? And what, 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 what would you care to explain what that bill was and you know, what it was trying to do? Why don't you just take that away? Sure. Um, to me, I've always said in this race that uh, this race is between a Nancy Pelosi liberal and a Kenny Holsoff conservative, and I guess they finally got it right um, with their with their mail piece. Uh, with regards to those particular issues, I am I'm pleased you brought that up because those two issues were about access and affordability. Those issues were about uh, testing that uh, would cause the premiums of those policies that everybody has out here that would go up as a result, and as a result. For every 1% of increase in the policy premium, you lose hundreds of thousands of people because they can no longer afford insurance at all. So they wouldn't even have coverage at all for these types of things. Mm -hmm. I have a wife, I have two daughters. It's very, very important to me that they have access to health care. The test that we're talking about in those two instances is a very, very small portion of what is in a big policy. Many of them are already covered by wellness benefits and other policies if you have an employer providing coverage for that. So those two issues are really red herrings from a way what's really the, 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 the crux of the problem here, which is at the bottom line, 25% of the cost of a health insurance policy are mandates that are put on there by the legislature. This is just another mandate to add more cost, and at the end of the day, if they would have a problem, those coverages would kick in and take care of the problem. So the only thing we're talking about is actually paying for the test itself, which is uh, important. But when you look at the, at the greater good of losing all these people who would have no coverage at all, not even for the test itself, you take a look at this at a bigger picture view and you say, you know what, this is an issue we need to take a bigger picture view of. We, we need to look at these folks and, and take care of, make sure they've got coverage for a big problem if they've got big problems. Thank you. Wayne, with regard to breast cancer research, are you suggesting that not enough money is going towards such research or simply that? more women should be aware and, and more along the preventive line. We want to continue to support those efforts. I mean, no research has never got enough money. All we can do is hope that they have enough to do the, the job to find the cures uh, and continue to do the research that makes our lives better. Uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, we'd support whatever it would take to continue to fight those, those diseases and, and, and breast cancer is extremely important. Uh, Missouri lost about 13,000 jobs in manufacturing just last year. So what would be um, your stance or your plan to keep jobs from going overseas? Well, my opponent wants a $1,700 job or a tax increase on every family in the ninth, which is going to cost 20,000 jobs for this, for this state. So obviously I would not raise taxes. I have signed a no tax pledge, which my opponent has not signed. So if she wants to really get down to the nitty gritty and help people and put jobs back in the state, she can start by signing a no tax pledge, which I've already done. Um, I think the thing we want to do to encourage, continue to encourage uh, uh, jobs here in the state is things like I did when I was in the House. I supported tax uh, tort reform. I supported work, workers' comp reform. Those are things that my opponent did, and as a result, we gained a lot of jobs over the last three years, although now, the last year or so, we have started to lose some jobs as we got caught in the, the, the financial mess of the rest of the country. So at this point, I think we've got to find a way to get out of this. Uh, I think you continue to grow. You provide an environment within which people want to come to the state, whether it be people or businesses. We were driving doctors out of the state. We were driving retirees out of the state. When I was at Lake of the Ozark, I proposed a bill that would allow uh, seniors to no longer pay income taxes on their Social Security benefits, and veterans to no longer pay taxes on their, on their benefits. That bill was proposed again this past year, my opponent voted against it. 
Now, those issues would, would allow people to come to our state. It would be an industry to itself. The City of Columbia here did a study back in the 90s. It said if for every retiree that you attract to your city, you attract one job and a quarter million dollars worth of assets. That was back then. I don't know what that study would show today, but I'm sure those numbers will be increased again. So if we had a situation where we did away with the, the, uh, the income tax on seniors and veterans pensions, it would allow people to move to our state or stay here. And it would be a whole industry to itself of people to come and bring jobs and monies to our state. Those are things that I think you look at, you find, you find tax incentive ways to bring people to this, to this state. Over and over again, it works. Anybody else? Otherwise, thank you everybody again for coming and thank all these great ladies for showing up today and supporting our, our efforts. We're looking forward to continuing uh, to work for them in D.C. Uh, look forward to working with all of you and uh, your endeavors and thank you very much.